In this video, I'm going to show you all of the different options for texture painting programs. And I'm gonna tell you which program is the best in different situations. And all of this is gonna be coming from my perspective as a Blender user. First of all, we have 3D Coat. And in a world of monthly and yearly subscriptions, it is quite nice to see a program that has a one-time upfront cost. You will have to pay for subsequent updates, but if you decide you don't want to pay for the updates, at least you still have the version of the program that you've purchased. 3D Coat also has some modeling and UV kind of features, which is nice because most texturing programs don't have these options. And to be fair, 3D Coat isn't really just a texturing program. It has a whole suite of other features and it can do quite a few different parts of the 3D workflow. However, I'm looking at these programs from a Blender user's perspective and a lot of the things that 3D Coat can do, Blender can do as well. So for that reason, if you're a Blender user, I probably wouldn't be looking too much at 3D Coat. Next up is Armor Paint, which has quite a unique feature in that it will run on Android and it will also run on iPad tablets. I'm not sure if that's a useful feature. It's kind of cool that it can do that though. Price-wise, it's very cheap as it's only $20 and all of the updates are free. And actually, I think you can get the program for free if you feel like building it yourself from the GitHub source code. But if not, $20 is really not a lot of money considering some of the other options and their prices later on in this list. If you haven't heard about Armor Paint before and you're not sure if it's like a legit program, well, it does have an Epic Games Mega Grant, which does generally indicate that the developers behind the program know what they're doing if they've managed to secure funding from Epic Games. It's also one of the few programs on this list that is node-based. This is kind of up to personal preference whether or not you prefer nodes or if you prefer filters, but personally, I think nodes are much easier to work with and I always prefer programs that have a good node-based workflow. So we've looked at the first couple of options for texture painting. However, there is no point doing any texture painting at all if you can't render your finished animation. And if you want to render your animation faster, you need a render farm. Graded Blue Render Farm is a very fast, very easy to use cloud rendering service, and it has the cheapest prices compared to any other render farm. I am one of the co-owners of the business and we have spent the past several years working on it, improving it and getting the prices down as low as possible so that rendering can be available to everyone and making cool animations is as affordable as possible. So if you want easy to use, fast and very, very low cost rendering, then have a look at Graded Blue Render Farm and the link to that is in the video's description below. And now we're on to one of the big, very, very tempting options, Mari. Now, I wouldn't necessarily recommend the last two options that I've talked about, but Mari is definitely one of the contenders. It is an industry standard program. It has Oscar nominations behind it. It has a huge network of people using it and there are tutorials and all that kind of thing available for it. And it is just the industry leader in anything to do with visual effects. If you're working on feature films or TV series, it will have had some amount of Mari used in it. And again, like Armor Paint, it has a node-based workflow, which again, I much prefer over using filters. Mari is capable of handling truly massive scenes. If you have very high poly objects or just very, very high resolution textures, Mari is built for dealing with IMAX quality visual effects. So you're not going to have any issues with having too complicated of a scene. Unfortunately, the user interface is a bit harder to learn than most of the other options because it is probably the most professional piece of software on the list and unfortunately a lot of very professional software doesn't have the best user interface but it's not awful and to be honest it's not like Blender has the best user interface in the world either so if you've managed to learn Blender I'm sure you'll be able to learn Mari as well. There is one very major disadvantage of Mari and as it's an industry standard program it has an industry standard price. Looking at the um, subscription options is rather painful. However, you only need a subscription if you're going to be doing commercial work. If you're just going to be learning, if you're say a student, or if you're just working on your demo reel, you can get an indie version of Mari, which is free. 
So if you're just looking to increase your skills and pick up another program, then you don't have to worry about the cost of Mari. But as soon as you start doing professional work, you will have to factor the price of the software if you're freelancing. Of course, if you're working for a studio, it doesn't really matter because the likelihood is they'll be providing the software for you. But in the case of my recommendation for Mari, if you want to have a career working in the visual effects industry, whether that be feature films, TV shows, adverts or whatever, then it is definitely worth using Mari as it is very highly used and it also looks very, very nice on your CV. Now, if the price of Mari put you off, then the next option will be much more appealing, which is Quixel Mixer. Quixel Mixer is made by Epic Games. It integrates very nicely with Unreal and if you want a ton of materials, then there is the Megascans library. The user interface is also very easy to use. In fact, I'd probably say out of all of the programs on the list, Quixel is going to be the easiest to use. So there's not really a huge commitment issue with it because it's quick to pick up and it's free. So if you don't like it, you can always move on to something else. Because of the integration with Unreal, if you want to work in the games industry or you want to work with real-time rendering, then Quixel is a very good idea to add to your tool bag. Another nice benefit of using Quixel Mixer is that it is one of the only programs on this list that works with Apple Silicon. The program I'll be mentioning next also works with Apple Silicon, but none of the previous three options do. Now, if none of the past four options have sounded appealing to you, then you are left with the last of my recommendations, the industry standard general purpose texture painting program, Substance Painter. In fact, you can't actually get Substance Painter as a standalone program anymore. If you want Substance Painter, you're going to get the entire Substance Suite, which also has Substance Designer, where you can create your own materials with all sorts of complicated fancy node setups. And there's also Substance Sampler, which allows you to generate materials based off photos. So if you want to not only paint custom materials and textures on an object, but also make them, then Substance has the best tool set. Now, Substance does have a subscription fee, but it is nowhere near as much as Mari is. It has recently been purchased by Adobe, and people do have mixed feelings about that because Adobe doesn't always have the best reputation with the reliability of their programs. However, as long as they don't keep adding more and more features without upgrading the infrastructure behind the code, the substance is probably going to be all right. Like all Adobe has to do is just keep adding a few updates and don't completely mess up the system. The Substance Painter is slightly harder to use than Quixel Mixer, but it's nowhere near as hard as Mari or some of the other options. So if you want a program that you can pick up relatively quickly, Substance is a good option. And there's also millions of tutorials on YouTube, so you should be able to find plenty of free educational content to go along with it. Now, whilst those five options are the main ones that stood out to me when I was looking at texture painting programs, there are a couple of other programs worth looking at. Autodesk Mudbox could be a viable option. It's not just texturing, it's also around sculpting. So if you're a Maya user and you like doing lots of characters or animals or something like that, maybe Mudbox might be worth looking at. But again, this video is from the perspective of a Blender user and from a Blender user, I didn't really see the appeal of Mudbox for my use cases. Another more compelling option is Marmoset Toolbag. There are two ways to gain access to the program. There is a monthly subscription option, which is a bit cheaper than Substance Painter, or you can pay one off, although that's only for the current version of Marmoset Toolbag. And if in the future they come up with another version, it's very likely you're gonna to have to pay for that version, although there's probably going to be a discount as they tend to do that, and they have done that with the previous options. The main reason I'm hesitant to use it is that whether or not it works on Apple Silicon is still a little unclear. If it does work on Apple Silicon, I might consider using it because I did cancel my Adobe Substance subscription a couple of years ago. It doesn't quite have as many features as Substance Painter, but it does have more than Quixel Mixer. For example, if you want to bake texture maps, good luck doing that in Quixel. In fact, if you look at Epic Games' Quixel Mixer tutorial, they actually tell you to bake the mesh maps in Marmos at Toolback first and then bring everything over into Quixel. I mean, at that point, if you're going to use Marmoset, why not texture in it as well? So, if you want a career in visual effects, then Mari or Substance are the two best options. And again, Substance, if you just want a general purpose 
texture painting program with a lot of nice features. And if you don't want to pay any money for your texturing program, then Quixel Mixer is very hard to beat. And if you don't like any of those previous options, or you don't like making big life decisions, then you can just stay inside Blender and do all your texturing there.